Hey, what's up guys? I'm Hop with TFB TV. I'm at the range today with the Smith & Wesson Shield EZ380 Performance Center. A lot of people get on my case for saying this, but the EZ380 is essentially a girl gun or a mom gun. It's a defensive or carry piece for somebody who's a little recoil shy or has limited hand strength. And that all makes sense for the normal EZ380. Doesn't make so much sense for the Performance Center Edition, which has a whole lot of features that your mom probably doesn't care about, unless your mom's favorite movie is John Wick Part 3. Let's take a closer look at it. The Performance Center version of the Smith & Wesson Shield 380 EZ seems like a really weird idea for a gun, doesn't it? The normal version totally makes sense. It fits into the target demographic for a granny gun. And I know I should stop calling it a granny gun, but at this point I'm just doing it to annoy you. Really, it's a gun for any shooter who might be recoil shy or have limited hand strength and have a difficult time racking the slide on a small 9mm. This category of guns includes 380 versions of guns typically chambered in 9mm, for example the Ruger LC380, the Sky CPX3, but it also includes something like the Walther PK380 and others. By making a locked breech gun in a caliber like 380 ACP, you can get a very soft recoil impulse with a very light slide weight and spring weight. So the upshot is the guns are not only controllable and comfortable to shoot, they also have slides that are relatively easy to retract. And because they're larger than your typical 380, the grip is more comfortable and it's easier to tame the recoil. Even experienced shooters can have a hard time with a gun like the Ruger LCP, but almost anybody should be able to shoot a Shield EZ 380 without trouble. Generally, these guns are also available in female-friendly color variations, but have few other features that serious shooters care about. However, the expensive and flashy features on the EZ 380 are a bit of an enigma. When your mom goes to the Buy Mart to find a comfortable, affordable pistol to buy for home defense or purse carry or whatever it is moms are into, there's no way the clerk will be able to upsell her on stuff like a titanium nitride finish, flat face trigger, or fiber optic tritium night sights. Let's take a look at it. The Shield EZ pistols have a grip safety on the back strap in lieu of an articulated trigger safety or a manual safety, although you can still get the EZ 380 with a manual ambidextrous thumb safety. At this time, the Performance Center EZ is only available with a thumb safety. In theory, having a grip safety allows for a light trigger pull and simplified trigger without sacrificing drop safety. You can rack the slide without disengaging the manual safety or the grip safety. I am a big fan of that feature. I don't think there's any reason for the manual safety to lock the movement of the slide, especially for new shooters, being able to manipulate the slide while the safety is on could be beneficial. The EZ380 is single stack with 8 round magazines and has a comfortable narrow grip. The slide has fish scale serrations on the rear as well as slightly protruding wings that make it very easy to rack the slide. It also has a hint of serrations on the front, but they're not really that useful. Since Smith & Wesson started putting these on the 2.0 series pistols, I thought they looked kind of like a machining accident. Mag release feel and placement is pretty much identical to the whole M&P range and the old Sigmas for that matter. It's been perfect since 1994, so no need to change it. The Performance Center version adds slide lightning cuts, which I'm sure are mostly there to look cool and show off the titanium nitride barrel. You can get these in other finish colors, but come on now, if you're buying one of these, I really hope you go for gold. One thing that's kind of interesting about this titanium nitride coating is that it doesn't take very many rounds before it starts to get really gross, but it's so slick you can just wipe it right off. Especially if you look at the barrel. The front of the barrel gets pretty grimy, but you can just whoop. Good as new. Really grimy. Really clean. The barrel is extended about a tenth of an inch from the stock EZ380 to allow for a single port in the top. Does it work? I think it does a bit. I shot the gun at night and you can definitely see gases getting redirected upwards. I'm not sure how much it helps, but it's something. In the extra large Performance Center box, Smith & Wesson includes two single stack 8 round magazines and a really nice Performance Center cleaning kit. I kind of think if you have more than one gun, you'll already have some cleaning stuff, but it's still a very nice bonus. The takedown on the EZ380 is the same style as the other M&Ps. Lock the slide back, rotate the takedown lever, then drop the slide and pull it off. There are no pins to push out or pieces to lose on the ground. Your mom will have no excuse not to clean it. So how does it shoot? It shoots about how you would expect a huge 380 to shoot. Soft, controllable, and easy to make hits with. Recoil on the EZ380 is gentle, but I think it could have been even softer if the grip safety went flush with the back strap. The recoil force wouldn't be focused down to as narrow of an area. With the 380, it's barely noticeable, but with the new 9mm EZ, it might be a little more obnoxious. 
Otherwise, the grip safety activates with such little pressure that I do not have any concerns that you wouldn't be able to disable the safety even with a compromised grip or maybe even an injured hand. Another good feature for a limited strength shooter. The manual safety lever works just like a 1911. If you don't ride it with your thumb, you might accidentally knock it into safe under recoil. This happened to TFB writer Luke with the EZ9. His article will be linked below. Read it if you want to know more about the 9mm version. If you do ride the safety lever, you might catch the slide serrations with your thumb and prevent the pistol from going into battery. This is especially an issue if you shoot with gloves on. I'm sure some commenters will say, just don't shoot with gloves on, you baby, so I'll just head that one off at the pass. If you live somewhere that isn't Texas, it is possible you will have gloves on during the winter when it's cold. People in Minnesota don't just leave their pistols at home in the winter. The combination tritium fiber optic sights are clean and easy to pick out at speed or in dim lighting. When shooting at night with the EZ380, I was able to make low light hits on a silhouette with no problem. They're also precise enough that you can get a clean sight picture for accurate shooting. I am less enamored with the trigger. It should be good. It's a flat face trigger with a light pull weight and a crisp break, but something about it just seems wrong. I had a tough time getting good groups out of the EZ380. I shot it worse than the Ruger EC9S and Taurus G2S I was shooting on the same outings. I'm sure if I spent more time with the EZ, I could get used to that trigger and those groups would shrink a little. Reliability with the EZ380 is fine. I only had one malfunction in about 400 rounds. It was a failure to return to battery, and it was while I was shooting with some mystery bubba reload, so take that with a grain of salt. So who should buy a Smith & Wesson 380 EZ Performance Center? I almost think this pistol is for an older shooter with limited hand strength who wants to get into competition shooting but still only wants to have one gun that they can also use for carry or home defense. The 380 Easy Performance Center is targeted at an extremely narrow niche market, but it's essentially perfect at what it's trying to do. So if this sounds like the kind of gun you want, you need to buy the Easy 380 Performance Center yesterday. For everyone else, a Shield 2.0 9mm makes a lot more sense. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, make sure you subscribe to TFB TV to see more like it. If you'd like to support us, you can do so by supporting our sponsors like Ventura Munitions. You can also support us directly by subscribing to us on Subscribestar or Patreon. We have a Discord channel that is linked in the video description. You can join up if you want to talk to us about stuff. See you next time.